How to make a Stuart triple expansion engine run. Removing the reversing mechanism, which needs remaking. The flywheel and eccentrics were difficult to remove, and there is a minor problem with all of the reversing gear, which is very common with the Stevenson's link system. The first thing I need to do in this episode is get rid of the reversing wheel and shaft. It is secured to one of the upright columns using one nut. Before I can remove the screw shaft, I need to take this collar off. And once more, this collar is held to the shaft using a grub screw. A 7BA slotted grub screw like the ones holding the eccentrics, but in this case, the grub screw wasn't putting much pressure on the shaft, so it didn't break as I unscrewed it. It was, however, surprisingly tight, but anyway, on to the next part of the job. Having removed the nut that secures the bearing to the upright, it was a very simple job to unscrew the reverser from the drop arm that moves the expansion links. The first thing I notice is that the expansion links are really tight. Not on the die blocks, they're okay, the die blocks are the bits in between. What's happening is, the top part of the expansion links are colliding with the valve fork at each end. This definitely needs attention. I'm surprised that the valve gear hasn't been damaged. The only casualty is the drop arm that moves the valve gear. That's got very loose because it's only secured with a roll pin, and roll pins are not so good for this job. You need proper taper pins. I will fit a taper pin to the main drop arm from the reversing screw, but before I do that, I definitely need to make sure that the valve gear moves properly. It's jamming up at different parts of the rotation of the crankshaft. I need to fit some Allen head grub screws to the other eccentrics, and to do this, I need to remove the flywheel. Then I can remove the eccentric sheaves and re-thread them 6BA, just like I showed in the last episode. I immediately ran into a problem. The flywheel was extremely tight on the crankshaft. I know why, but I have to be very careful how I remove it. No ultraviolence is required, I just used some small screwdrivers, moving up a blade size every time I actually got the flywheel to move. Once I got to this size, finally started to part company with the crankshaft. And then it was a simple job to rotate it many, many times to free it off. So why is the flywheel so tight? Looking at the state of the crankshaft, it would appear that the flywheel's been removed from the engine and refitted and the screw tightened many times. Only when I got the flywheel to a part where the screw had never been tightened is when it finally rotated and I could just pull it off the crankshaft. Just coincidentally, I've noticed that one of the arms that drives the air pump is a bit bent. I don't know why this is, I will ask the owner. I noticed it when the engine first arrived, but I don't want to straighten it in case it's been bent like that to align with the air pump. When I look at this image, I can see an alternative fix that I don't think is a good idea. I could make the drag links a bit longer, all six of them. But no, I think that's not a good idea. But to be on the safe side, I will have a look at the dimensions on the drawing. I think it's going to be a simpler job just to remake the reversing screw and the threaded block that fits in the drop arm. In this clip, I managed to get the valve gear in the right position at the opposite end. The only way I could do this was to make sure the crankshaft was just in one position. Luckily, since I got the engine running for the first time, the only casualty would appear to be the drop arm that connects to the reversing screw, which is very loose on the shaft. I need to ream this out for a taper pin, and I will also apply some Loctite 603 to it. The others, for the moment, seem to be okay. I can only move the valve gear freely like this, and at the moment it's not that free, with the crankshaft precisely in one position. If I rotate the crankshaft at all, they will not move smoothly. I will tackle this problem in the next episode. All I need is a square needle file. More about that in the next episode. Back to the flywheel. I've removed the 2BA slot-headed grub screw, and I'm replacing it with a substantial and much longer 2BA Allen head grub screw. The crankshaft at this end is a bit of a mess. It's really chewed up in many different places all the way around. This has been caused by over-tightening the grub screw in the flywheel. 
and it's just chewed up the crankshaft, and it's happened in many different positions at many different times. The next part of the job is to remove the eccentric sheaves at this end, and just like at the other end, I need to disconnect both of the eccentric rods from the expansion link. When I refitted the flywheel, I tightened the grub screw, but as I didn't over tighten it, the flywheel just slid off the crankshaft without event. And once again, the two grub screws holding the eccentric sheaves had been over tightened and raised burrs on the crankshaft, and they were really difficult to remove. To initially get the eccentric sheaves to move, I hate to say that I had to resort to some minor violence to move the eccentric. And once it started to move, I used different thickness screwdrivers to lever it away from its original position. Then I used a needle file to clean up the crankshaft. The crankshaft really was badly marked all the way down. I fitted the crankshaft into the chuck of my small Bosch electric drill and by rotating the crankshaft slowly using the electric drill and a small needle file, I removed every one of the burrs that were causing the problem. I finished off the job using a piece of Scotsbrite. In this clip, you can see the many burrs on the crankshaft, or at least the marks where they've been. The drill, needle file and Scotsbrite method removed all of the burrs that were causing the problem. As I'm working on the engine, I'm picking up more and more problems for instance, this stud was just pushed into the hole. The thread in the cylinder block was no more due to over-tightening. And here you can clearly see the bend on the gunmetal arm that operates the air pump. I've mentioned this before and I can't do anything about it until I find out whether this was intentional or not. In the next episode, I will be packing the piston rod and valve glands with Teflon-coated yarn. To conclude this episode, I'm going to show you a collection of taper pins. These are what you need to use in conjunction with taper reamers to accurately secure parts to shafts. And that is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.